Shoot. The reveler's gonna need this. Uh, they won't mind if I take a nap. I mean, you wrote it, so... Oh. oh, there's a note. Hope you don't mind solving the centuries-old crime. Shakespeare deserves his long-deserved closure after having been murdered. Oh. Don't forget about Reveille, though. Sign Hench and Hewitt. Oh, oh. all right, all right. Uh, looks like we're doing this. Uh, maybe it was one of his characters that killed him. At least we have a list of suspects, starting with the classic Romeo and Juliet. Director is Pitt, bloody love and pity festival, and the iconic ball scene in which Romeo aims and Juliet meet for the first time. But we also get a closer look at other dynamics. Take a look, shall we? Sure. Let's do it. Welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians play.
Capulet. For you and I, our paths are death and age. How long is it now since last yourself and I were in a match? By Our Lady, thirty years. What, man? Tis not so much, tis not so much. Tis since the nuptials with Sentio. Come Pentecost, as quickly as it will, some five and twenty years and then we met. Tis more, tis more. His son is elder, sir. His son is thirty. Will you tell me that? His son was but a ward two years ago. Who is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach to torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel in Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady. Oh, her fellow shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand and touching hers make blessed of my rude hand. To my heart, love till now, forswear it sight, for ne'er have I seen true beauty till this night. This, by his voice, should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What dares the slave come hither covered with an antic face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock in honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why? How now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman, and, to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. Therefore, be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, the which, if thou respect, show fair presence, and put off these frowns, an ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. Why, uncle, I mean, tis a shame. Go to. Go to, go to. Your saucy boy is so indeed. This trick may chance to scathe you, I know what. You must contrary me. I'll make you quiet. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitterest gall. Fain with my unworthiest hand, this holy shrine, this gentle sin is this. My lips to blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a gentle kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong with your hand too much, which merely devotion shows as this. For saints have hands, which pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints' lips and holy palmers too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray. Grant thou us faith turned to despair. Saints have lips that they must use in prayer. Then move not, or my prayers affect thy attention. Thus are my lips by thine, my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin? From my lips? Oh, trespass, sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kissed by the book. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. What is your mother? Mary, bachelor, her mother is the lady of the house. And a good lady, and a wise, and virtuous. And there's her daughter that you talk of all. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. Away, be gone, the party is at its best. Aye, so I fear. The more is mine rest. Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifle and foolish banquet towards. <coughs> ah, it's
Is it even so? I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. All to my rest. Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? The daughter and heir of old Tiberio. What is he that follows that would not dance? Marry that, I think, the young Petruccio. What is he that now goes out the door? What is uh, he that follows that would not dance? I know not. Got him, ma'am. If he be married, my grave is to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo, and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only loves from my only hate, too early seen unknown, and known too late. What prodigious birth it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learned, one even now, one I dance with all. Juliet. Anon, anon, come, let's away. The strangers all are gone. I can't say that the Capulets had a hand in his death. They seem too, um, stuffy. Uh, if we can agree on anything, let's just say it was one of his trained knights that killed him. Like Prince Charles and his army? Yes. Directors Chase Parabo and Paige Harrow make a great case for them in their scene from Henry VI, part one. After a defeat in battle, a despondent Charles, Prince of France, learns from his messenger of a holy maid with divine powers. Initially skeptical, Charles tests her in combat, not willing to give up his position so quickly. Compelling narrative for a killer, but let's take a look, shall we? English bastards in their vile tactics. What a disastrous bloodbath. Salisbury is a desperate homicide. He fight it as one weary of his life. Lean, raw bone rascals! Who would ever suppose they had such courage and audacity? Let's leave this town, for they are harebrained slaves, and hunger will enforce them to be more eager. Their arms are set. 
like clocks, still to strike on. And my consent will even let them alone. Be it so. Where is this Chopin? I have news for him. Bastard of Orleans. Thrice welcome to us. Methinks your looks are sad. Your fear of home. Has the way overthrow brought you to Venice? Be not dismayed, for succor is at hand. A holy maid hither with me I bring, which by a vision sent from heaven, ordain it is to raise this tedious siege and drive the English forth the bounds of France. The spirit of the deep prophecy she hath, exceeding the nine sibyls of old Rome. What's past and what's to come, she can descry. Speak, my tolerance. Believe my words, fair, certain, and unfallible. Go, call her in. But first, to try her skill, ring it. Stand thou as Dauphin in my place. Question her proudly. Let thy looks be stern. By this means we shall sound what skill she Made, if thou wilt do these wondrous deeds. Renier, is thou that thinks to beguile me? Where is the Dauphin? Come, come from behind. I know thee well, though never seen before. Be not amazed. There is nothing hid from me. In private will I talk with thee apart. Stand back, you lords, and give us leave a while. She takes upon her bravely at first dash. Dauphin, I am by birth a shepherd's daughter. My wit untrained in any kind of art, heaven and our gracious lady hath it pleased to shine on my contemptual estate. Lo, whilst I waited on my tender lands, God's mother deigned to appear to me and willed me to free my country from calamity. Ask me what question thou canst, and thou shalt find I will answer unpremeditated. My courage try by combat if thou darest, and thou shalt find I'll exceed my sex. Thou hast astonished me with thy high terms. Only this proof I'll of thy valor make. In single combat thou shalt buckle with me, and if thou vanquishest, Thy words be true, otherwise I renounce all confidence. I am prepared. Here is my keen edged sword, the which a terrain in St. Catherine's churchyard of a great deal of old iron I chose forth. Then come, a God's name, I fear no woman. And why live on the ever flock from a man? Sovereign be, tis the French shall fall sooth to thee thus. I must not yield to any rights of love, for my profession sacred from above. When I have chased all thy foes from hence, then will I think upon recompense. Meantime, look gracious in thy prostrate thrall. My lord, methinks, is very strong in talk. <laughs> Doubtless, he shrives this woman to her smock, else ne'er could he so long protract his speech. Shall we disturb him then, since he keeps no mood? He may mean more than we poor men do know. These women are shrewd tempters with their tongues. My lord, my lord, my lord! Where are you? W what divide you on? Shall we give over or we on? Er, er, no. Why, no, I say, distrustful recreants. Fight to last gasp. I will be your guard. Sword fight. What she says, I will confirm. 
We'll fight it out. Fight. Indeed. Assigned in I to be the English scourge. This night besiege a shirt that I'll raise. Glory like yeah, a circle glory. in the water. We'd have our sheep it to enlarge Jesus itself Jesus. by broad yes. spreading and disperse to naught. Yes. Yes. Was Muhammad inspired with the dollar? Yeah, he was. Thou with an eagle art inspired then. How may I reverently worship thee enough? Leave off delays and let us raise, raise the siege. Woman, do what thou canst to She'll save our it. honors. Drive them from Orleans and be immortalized. Yeah, immortalized. Presently we'll try. Come, let's the way about it. Viva la France. No prophet will I trust if she prove false. It wasn't Joan of Arc who killed Shakespeare. I once read in a book that she probably never killed anyone. Well, then we're back to square one, and we've barely even begun. Well, our next scene comes from directors Lex Boyd and Greta Weirich. Maybe they're onto something to, by directing Act Four, Scene Three of Love Labors Lost. This scene depicts a king and his lords breaking a vow by falling in love with four women. Been there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 As they each attempt to deliver letters to their loves, the truth begins to unravel and chaos ensues. Let's take a look. Sure. By the Lord, this love is as mad as Ajax. It kills sheep. It kills me. I, a sheep, I will not love. I will not. By heaven, I do love, and it hath taught me to rhyme and to be melancholy. She hath one of my letters already. The clown bore it, the fool sent it, and the lady hath it. Sweet clown, sweeter fool, sweetest lady. Here comes one with a paper. God give him grace to groan. Shot by heaven. Proceed. 
indeed, sweet Cupid, thou hast thumped him with thy bird bolt. So sweet a kiss the golden sun gives not to those fresh morning drops upon the rose as thy eye beams when their fresh rays have smote the night of dew that on my cheeks down flows. Nor shines the silver moon one half so bright through the transparent bosom of the deep as doth thy face through tears of mine give light. Thou shinest in every tear that I do weep. O queen of queens, how far dost thou excel? No thought can think or tongue of mortal tell. How shall she know my griefs? I'll drop the papers. Who's he that comes here? What? Longaville? And reading? Listen, ear. Now, in thy likeness, one more fool appear? I fear these stubborn lines lack power to move. Oh, sweet Maria, Empress of my love. These numbers do I care and write in prose. Oh, rhymes are guard on wanton Cupid's hoes. No. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. <clears throat> this same shall go. A woman I forswore, but I will prove, thou being a goddess, I forswore not thee. My vow is earthly, thou a heavenly love. If it is broken, then it is no fault of mine. If by me broke, what fool is not so wise to lose an oath to win a paradise? shall I send this to? Company. Stay. All hand, all hand, an old infant play. Like a demigod, here sit I in the sky, as wretched fool's secrets heedfully o'er I. Do main, transform, four woodcocks in a dish, Oh, most divine, Kate. Oh, most profane, coxcomb. By heaven, the wonder an immortal eye. By earth, she is not corporal there, you lie. Her amber hair is for fell half amber quoted. An amber-colored raven was well noted. As fair as day. I as some days, but then no sun must shine. Oh, that I have had my wish. Once more, I will read the ode that I have writ. Once more, I'll mark how love can vary. On a day, alack the day, love whose month is ever May, spite of blossom passing fair, plain in the wanton air, that the lover, sick to death, wished himself to heaven's breath. Air, quoth he, thy cheeks may blow. Air, might I triumph so? But alack, my hand is sworn, ne'er to pluck thee from thy thorn. Do not call it sin in me that I am forsworn for thee, thou for whom Jove would swear, turning mortal for thy love. That shall express my true love's fasting pain. Oh, would the king Barone and Longaville were lovers too, for none shall offend where all alike do dote. Do me? Oh. Thy love is far from charity. That in most loves grief, most desirous society. Come, sir, you blush. As his, your case is such. You chided him, offending twice as much. I heard your guilty rhymes, observed your fashion. Saw sighs reek from you, noted well your passion. What will Barone say when that he shall hear faith in fringe? Such zeal did swear. Now step I forth to wit hypocrisy. Ah, good, my liege, I pray thee, pardon me. Your eyes do make no coaches in your tears. There is no certain princess that appears. But are you not ashamed? Nay, are you not? All three of you to be thus much o'ershot. Too bitter is thy jest. 
Are we betrayed thus to thy overview? Not you to me, but I betrayed by you. When shall you hear that I will write a thing in rhyme, or groan for Joan, or spend a minute's time in pruning me? When shall you hear I will praise a hand, a foot, a face, an eye, a gait, a skate, a brow, a breast, a waist, a leg, a limb? Soft, wither away so fast, a true man, or a thief that gallops so? I post from love. Good lover, let me go. What present hast thou there? Some certain treason. What makes treason here? I beseech your grace, let this letter be read. Oh, fool, you horse and loggerhead. You were born to do me shame. Guilty, sir, guilty. I confess, I confess. You three fools lacked me, fool, to make up the mess. He, he, and you, and you, my liege, and I are pit purses in love, and we deserve to die. Now the number is even. But <laughs> what of this? Are we not all in love? Well, nothing so sure. They're by all forsworn. Then leave this chat, and good Barone, okay. now prove our loving lawful and our faith not torn. Now to plain dealing, play these clauses by. Now shall we resolve to go woo these girls of yes. France yes. and win them too. Yes. Therefore, let's let us devise some entertainment for them in their tents. Away, away! No time shall be omitted that will be time and may by us be fitted. have been led on a wild goose chase. I doubt anyone from Triple L would kill Shakespeare. Clearly not the smartest group of people. My working theory, these two cool forces did the deed. He wrote about them often. So they came back for revenge. Exactly. And directors Aidan Shevlin and Jacob Haney showcased this mysticism well with act three, scene two of The Tempest. Here, we see Stefano and Trinculo befriend Caliban and plot to kill Prospero, Ariel's servant, attempts to disrupt their plans through means of magic. Let's take a look. Yep. Tell them, when the butt is out, we will let drink water, not a drop before. Therefore, bear up and boredom. Servant monster, drink to me. Servant monster? The folly of this island. They say there are but five upon this island. We are three of them. If the other two be brained like us, the state potters. Where shall they be set else? He be a brave monster indeed if they be set in his tail. My man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. As for my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam ere I could recover the shore, five and thirty leagues off and on by this light. That should be my lieutenant, monster, or my standard. <laughs> Your lieutenant, if you list. He's no standard. Mooncalf, speak once in thy life, if thou beest a good mooncalf. How does thy honor? Let me lick thy shoe! <laughs> <laughs> Will not 
serve him, he is not valiant. Thou liest, most ignorant monster. Why, thou debauched fish, thou. <laughs> Was there ever man a coward that has drunk so much sack as I today? Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? Lo, how he mocks us! Wilt, Wilt thou, thou let him, our lord? Ha! Lord, quoth he, that a monster be such a natural. A low, low, again! Bite him to death, we prithee! Trade you Keep a good tongue in thy head. If you prove a mutineer, the next tree. The poor monster's my subject. He shall not suffer indignity. We thank our noble lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit we made to thee? Mary, will I kneel and repeat it? I shall stand, and so shall Trinculo. As we told thee before, we are subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that, that by, by his cunning hath taken us of the island. Thou liest! Thou liest, thou jesting monkey, thou! We would, my valiant master, would destroy thee! We do not lie! Trinculo, interrupt the monster one more time by the ends of his tail, and by this hand I shall supplant some of your teeth. Why? I said nothing. Mum then, and no more. Proceed. We say by sorcery he got this isle. From us he got it. If thy greatness will, revenge it on to him. For we know thou darest. But this thing dare not. How shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, our lord. We'll yield him the asleep. Where thou mayst knock a nail into his head. Thou liest! Thou canst not! What a pie ninny this, thou scurvy patch! We do beseech thy greatness. Give him blows and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink naught but brine, for we'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, interrupt the monster one word further, and by this head, I'll make a mercy out of my doors and make a stockfish out of thee. Why, I did nothing. I'll stand farther off. Didst thou not say he lies? Thou liest! Do I so? Take thou that! <coughs> As you like it, give me the lie another time. I do not give the lie out of your wits and hearing do a pox o your bottle. This can sack and drinking do. I'm a rain on your monster, and the devil take your finger! <laughs> <laughs> now, forward with your tail. Prithee and stand further off. Beat him enough. After a little time, we'll, we'll beat, beat him, him too. too. Farther! Come, proceed. Why, as we told thee before, Tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him. Having first seized his books. Or with a log, batter his skull, or punch him with a stick, or cut his reason with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he is but a sot. As we are. Nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rudely as we. Burn but his books. And that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a non pariah. We have never seen a woman before, but only cigarettes are Dan and she. But she have far surpasses cigarettes as grace does leap. <laughs> is it so brave a lie? Aye, Lord. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I shall be king and queen. Save our graces. Trinculo thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Excellent. Give me thy hand. I'm sorry I beat thee, but while thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? I monster, on my honor. This will I tell my master. Thou mad'st us merry, we are full of pleasure. <laughs> Let us be jocund. <laughs> will you troll the catch you taught us but well air? I, monster, at thy request, I will do reason, any reason. 
Come on, Chichilo, let us sing. Oh, flout em and cout em and scout em and flout em. The heart is free. <laughs> what is the same? This is the tune of our cat played by the picture of nobody. Thou beest a man, show thou thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest a devil, take thou this. Oh, oh, forgive me my sins. He that dies pays all debts like a Friday. Mercy upon us. Art thou a fear? No, master, not I. Be not a fear. The isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about our ears. And sometimes voices that then, if we have waked after long sleep, will make us dream again. And then in dreaming, the clouds we thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon us. That when we waked, we, we cried to dream again. The song is going away now. Let us follow it and then do our work. Lead monster, we'll follow. I would, I could see this table. He lays it on. Let's come. I'll follow, Stefano. Tempest characters, these women murderers, is seriously starting to click with me. Case closed! Whoa, whoa, hold on. We still have three more suspects left. We can't just close the case yet. I mean, what about Winter's tail? Maybe uh, hypothermia got to him. I doubt that's what... <laughs> I seriously doubt that's it. And I don't think that's what directors Renee Greek and Aliana Montgomery had in mind for their scene. It says here in my notes that their scene revolves around Perdita and Florizel preparing for a sheep shearing festival. Florizel's identity as prince is revealed when his disguised father confronts him. Due to this, things go awry. But maybe, just maybe, they're able to get away with this. Let's take a look. Let's find out. sheep shearing is as a meeting of the petty gods and you the queen aren't sir my gracious lord to chide at your extremes it not becomes me oh pardon that i name them your greatness has not been used to fear even now i tremble to think your father by some accident should pass this way as you did oh the face how would he look to see his work so noble, vilely bound up. What would he say? And how should I, in these my borrowed flaunts, behold the sternness of his presence? 
Thou dearest Perdida, with these forced thoughts I prithee darken not the mirth o' the feast. I'll be thine, my fair, or not my father's, for I cannot be mine own, nor anything to any, if I be not thine. To this I am most constant, though destiny say no. Your guests are coming. Address yourself to entertain them sprightly, and let's be red with mirth. Bye, daughter. Pray you bid these unknown friends to us welcome. Come sir. Hot lavender, mint, savory, marjoram, the marigold, grace and remembrance be to you both and welcome to our shearing. Shepherdess, a fair one are you? You're very welcome. Now, my fairest friend, I would I had some flowers, oh, the spring that may become your time of day, and yours, and yours, oh, these I lack to make you garlands of. And my sweet friend, to strew him o'er and o'er. What, like a corpse? No, like a bank for love to lie and play on. Not like a corpse, or if, not to be buried, but quick in his nine arms. When you speak, sweet, I'd have you do it ever. When you do dance, I wish you a wave o' oh, the sea. You might ever do nothing but that. Move still, still so, and own no other function. Each your doing so singular in each particular crowns what you are doing in the present each, that all your acts are clean. Oh, Doricles, your phrases are too large. But come, our dance, I pray. This is the prettiest bobo knot that ever ran on the green forest. Too noble for this place. He tells her something that makes her blood look out. Come on, strike up. You can my daughter. I think so too, for never gaze the moon upon the water. I shall stand and read, I swear, my daughter's eyes. She dances featly, though she does anything. Is not too far gone? Tis time to part them. Pray, good shepherd, your, your heart is full of something that does take your mind from feasting. Oh, hear me breathe my life before this ancient sir. Let me hear what you profess. The earth, the heavens, and all not prize them without her love. It's fairly offered. This shows a sound affection. But my daughter, say you the like to him? I could not speak so well. Nothing so loud. Ah, take hands, a bargain. Beseech you, have you a father? I have, but what of him? Knows he of this? He neither does nor shall. Methinks a father is at the nuptial of his son, a guest that best becomes the table. Let him know it. No, good sir, he shall not. Prithee, let him. No, he must not. Mark our contract. Mark your divorce, <laughs> young sir, whom son I dare not call. Thou art too base to be acknowledged. And now, fresh piece of excellent witchcraft, I'll have thy beauty scratched with briars and made more homely than thy state. And thou, old traitor, I am sorry that by hanging thee, I can but shorten thy life one week. Go, my heart! For thee, fond boy, we'll bar thee from succession, not hold thee of our blood, no, not our kin. Mark thou my words. And you, enchantment, if ever henceforth thou 
thou hold his body more with thy embraces, I would devise a death as cruel for thee as thou art tender to it. I told you what would come of that. Oh, cursed wretch! The noose this was the prince, and wouldst adventure forth to mingle faith with him? Undone! Undone! If I might die within this hour, I might have lived to die when I desire. Okay, so they ran away, automatically making them suspicious. They're moving up on my list. They're just too messy. But kings, on the other hand, messy and murderers 100% of the time. Director Sophie Akajobi and Aiden Wilt certainly know they're crazy murderers as well. This year, they've chosen to showcase the crazy man and murderer, Richard III. Their scene is coming from Act Five, when King Richard and Richmond are visited by the ghosts of Richard's past. Now, if there's ghosts, that clearly means Richard did something. But there's only one way to find out. Yes, there is. Let's see. Send out a pursuivant at arms. Sawest thou the melancholy lord of Northumberland? Thomas, the Earl of Surrey, and himself. Much about cockshut time went from tro troop to troop, cheering up the soldiers. So I am satisfied. Bring me a bowl of wine. <laughs> I have not the alacrity of spirit, nor cheer of mind I was one to have. Bid my guard watch. Leave me. Fortune and victory sit on thy helm. All comfort that the dark night can afford be to thy person. Noble father in law. Tell me, how fares our loving mother? Thy, thy attorney, bless thee from thy mother, who prays continually for Richmond's good. Good Lord, conduct him to his regiment. I'll strive with troubled thoughts to take him back. Good night, kind Lord. O oh, thou whose captain I account myself, to thee I do commend my watchful soul, ere I let fall the windows of mine eyes. 
sleeping and waking, oh, defend me still. heavy in thy soul tomorrow. Think how thou stabbest me in my prime of youth. Despair, therefore, and die. Be cheerful, Richmond, for the wronged souls of butchered princes fight in thy behalf. King Henry's issue, Richmond, comfort. Let me sit heavy in thy soul tomorrow, I that was washed to death with fulsome wine. Poor Clarence, be thy guile betrayed to death, despair and die. Thou offspring of the house of Lancaster, the wronged heirs of York do pray for thee. Good angels guard thy battle, live and flourish. Let me sit heavy in thy soul tomorrow. Rivers that die at Pomfret, despair and die. Think upon Gray and let thy soul despair. Think upon Vaughn and with guilty fear, despair and die. Awake and think our wrongs in Richard's bosom will conquer him. Awake and win the day. Dream on thy cousin, smothered in the tower. Let us be led within thy bosom, Richard, and weigh thee down to ruin, shame, and death. Thy, thy nephew's nephew souls do bid thee despair and die. Sleep, Richmond. Sleep in peace and wake in joy. Good angels guard thee from the boar's annoy. Live and beget a happy race of kings. Edward's, Edward's unhappy sons do bid thee flourish. Richard, thy wife, that wretched and thy wife, that never slept a quiet hour with thee, now fills thy sleep of perturbations. Fall on thy edgeless sword, despair and die. Richmond, thou quiet soul, sleep thou a quiet sleep. Dream of happy success and victory. Thy adversary's wife doth pray for thee. Despair, Despair Richard, and, and die. die. Give me another horse. Find up my wounds. I must say no. So. I did but dream. Oh, coward conscience, how dost thou afflict me? The light burn blue. It is now dead midnight. Cold, fearful drops stand on my trembling flesh. What do I fear? Myself. There is none else by. Richard loves Richard. That is, I am I. 
Is there a murderer here? No. Yes. I am. Then fly! What? From myself? Great reason why lest I revenge. What? Myself upon myself. Alack, I rather love myself. Wherefore any reason that I myself hath done unto myself. Oh no. <laughs> Alack. I rather hate myself for hateful deeds committed by myself. I am a villain. <laughs> 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 Yet I lie. I am a brute. <laughs> My conscience hath a several thousand and every tongue bring in a several tale, and every tale condemns me for a villain. Perjury, perjury in the highest degree. Murder, <laughs> stern murder in the direst degree. All several sins all used in each degree, thronged to the bar crying, oh, guilty, guilty. My lord. Sounds! Who is that? Ratcliffe, my lord, tis I, the early village cock, hath twice done salutation to the morn. Your friends are up and buckle their armor. Come! Richmond, how hast thou slept? Sweetest sleep and fairest boating dreams that ever entered in a drowsy head have I since your departure had, my lord. Methought the souls whose bodies Richard murdered came to my tent and cried on victory. How far into the morning is it, lord? It's upon the stroke of four. Why then, says time to arm and give direction. More than I have said, loving countrymen, the leisure and enforcement of the time forbids to dwell upon. Yet remember this, God and our good cause fight on our side. The prayers of holy saints and wronged souls, like high-reared bulwarks, stand before our faces. Advance your standards, draw your willing swords, sound drums and trumpets boldly and cheerfully. God and Saint George, Richmond and victory! directed that scene. 
but I'm really starting to think that Richard might be the prime suspect in Shakespeare's life. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. And if not Shakes, uh, if not Richard, most certainly one of those ghosts. But we do still have two more scenes left. Well, let's hear about them. Directors Megan Britcher and Braxton Wilt take on Act One, Scene Three from Twelfth Night, in which friends Toby and Andrew try to lift spirits by partying with a hired fool. This causes disruptions that upset Maria and Malvolio. Despite reprimands, they continue hoping that their efforts go somewhere. Let's take a look. After midnight is to be up at times, and to look you lose your thou knowest. Nay, my troth, I know not. I know to be up late uh, is to be up late, thou a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Marion, I say, a stoop of wine. Comes the fool, I faith. How now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now let's have a catch. Twasn't very gracious fooling last night. Twasn't very good, I faith. I sent thee six pence for thy latest pastor. I did impecticos thy gratility, for Malvolio's nose is no whip stock. My lady has a white hand, and the mirandoms are no bottle ale houses. Excellent. Why, twas the very best fooling. Once all was done, now a song. Come on, there's sixpence for you. Now let's have a song. Have you a love song or a song of good life? A love song, a love song. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, say and hear your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. Trip now for the pretty sweetie, journey's ended, love is meeting, every wise and song doth know. What caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady have not sent up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. Malvolio's a peg of Ramsey, and three merry men we be. Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley, lady. Oh, there dwelt a man in Babylon, lady, lady. Be shrew me, the night's an admirable fooling. On the twelfth day of December, for the love? Oh, God, peace. My masters, are you mad or what are you? Have ye no wit, man wits, manners, nor honesty but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of my lady, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, the art, for I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. It is even so. But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. Out of tune, sir, ye lie. Art thou any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, that there shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, and by St. Anne, the ginger shall be hot in the mouth, too. That's in the right. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor anything more than contempt, you would not give me to this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ears. Good night, Penthesilia. Before me, she's a good wench. Come, come, I'll go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, night. Come, night.
Okay, can I just say these seniors are not the best detectives? Agreed. Maybe their scene will reveal all though. They will be presenting our final subjects. And as they said, kings are crazy. Our senior troupe portrays Act 5, Scenes 1 and 2 of Henry VI, Part 3. In the midst of the War of Roses, several noblemen come together to prepare for fight at dusk. With tensions rising between good friends Warwick and Somerville, nothing appears to be going well with the opposite sides. Well, you guessed it. It'll most likely lead to murder. Let's take a look, shall we? that came from valiant Oxford. How far hence is thy noble lord, mine honest fellow? But this sense and more, marching hitherward. Uh, where is my brother Montague? Where is the post that came from Montague? By the same tree, with a pleasant troop. <sighs> <sighs> Say, Somerville, what says my loving son? And by thy guess, how nigh is Clarence now? At Salgham I did leave him with his forces, and do expect him here some two hours hence. Then Clarence is at hand. I hear his drums. It is not his, my lord. Here Salgham lies. The drum your honor hears marcheth from Warwick. They are at hand, and you shall quickly know. March, flourish. Unbid spite, a sportful Edward come. Where slept our scouts, or how were they seduced that we could hear no news of his repair? Now, Warwick, wilt thou go to the city gates? See gentle word and ugly bed thy need. Calm Edward, king, and at his hand beg mercy, he shall forgive thee these outrages. Uh, nay, rather draw thy forces hence, confess who set thee up and plucked thee down. Call Warwick patron, and be penitent. And thou shalt still remain the Duke of York! I thought at least he would have said the king. Or does he make the jest against his will? Is not a dukedom, sir, a goodly gift? I, by my faith, for a poor earl to give. How do thee service so good a gift? Twas I. Set thy brother the kingdom! Why, then, is mine for my warrant fit? For Warwick's king is Edward's prisoner. And tell is Warwick, who will answer this? What is the body where the head is off? Come, Warwick, take the time, take the time. Nay, when? Strike now. I had rather chop off this hand at a blow, and with the other fling it at thy face, than bear so low a sail to strike to thee. This hand that is wound about thy cold black hair shall, while thy head is warm and cut off, break in the dust, be scented with thy blood. Wind changing Warwick, now can shame no more. Ah, oh, cheerful colors. See where Oxford comes. Oxford. Oxford for Lancaster. Welcome, Oxford, for we want thy help. Montague, Montague for Lancaster. Thou and thy brother both shall by this treason, even with dearest blood, thou bodies bear. Southam! Southam for Lancaster. And lo, where George of Clarence sweeps along, a force enough to bid his brother battle, with whom an upright zeal to right prevails, more so than the nature of a brother's love. Come, Clarence, come, thou wilt, if Warwick call. Father of Warwick, know you what this means? Look, 
how I throw my infamy at thee. I will not ruinate my father's house, who gave his blood to build up and line the stones and build up Lancaster. So, proud Hartford Warwick, I defy thee. And to my brother, I turn all the things to God. Pardon me, and I will make amends. And Richard, please do not start upon my fault. There will be no more upon your fault. Welcome, good Clarence. This is Brother Lancaster. Oh, passing traitor. Burgeon and unjust! Tell me who is Victor, York or Warwick? Why ask I that? My mangled body shows. My blood, my want of strength. <clears throat> my sick heart shows that I must yield my body to the earth and by my fall, the conquest of my foe. Lo, now my glory smeared in dust and blood. My parks. My walks, my manners that I've had, even now forsake me. Oh, I cannot hold long for the life of me. Ah, Warwick! Warwick. Oh, Warwick, wert thou as we art, we might recover all our loss again. The queen from France hath brought a puss into power. Even now we heard the news. Ah, couldst thou fly? Why, then I would not fly. Ah, Montague, take my hand, and with thy lips keep in my soul a while. If thou lovest me not, for brother, if thou didst, Thy tears would wash this cold, congealed blood that glues my lips and will not let me speak. Come quickly, Montague, or I am dead. Ah, Warwick. Montague hath breathed his last, and to the latest gasp cried out for Warwick, and said, Commend me to my valiant brother. And more he would have said, and more he spoke, which sounded like a cannon in a vault that might not be distinguished. But at last I well might hear delivered with a groan. Oh, farewell, Warwick! Oh, sweet rest his soul! Fly, lords, and save thyselves, for Warwick bids you farewell to me in heaven. Away, away to meet the queen's great power. Here they bear away his body.
it's certainly been a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's certainly been a night. A good night. Great scenes, one after the other. Yeah. I mean, I have to agree. Hold on. Let's get a warm round of applause for all of our talented directors and actors tonight. Shakespeare. We can't just leave everyone hanging. Okay, surely this can't be a mystery. Can somebody please just look this up? I got it. <clears throat> oh, it says here that while historians do believe that murder was a possibility, it was most likely syphilis oh. that killed him. <laughs> syphilis. Yeah. No. Oh. Oh. oh, hey guys. Oh. Chevy? Did I pass out? Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you know what killed Shakespeare? Oh, it was typhoid. Oh. He died of typhoid. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there you have it. Shakespeare's official cause of death brought to you by us, the Shakespeare troupe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming out, and I, I'd well, we'd like to send a special thank you to Grayson Rec and Thundering Herd Productions. <laughs> Alongside our amazing pit band, who was able to create original music for each scene. <laughs> and a big thank you to Sue Hench and Doug, a.k.a. Dougie Hewlett for helping us for helping us all throughout this entire process. We owe them so much. And finally, a big thank you to Her TV for live streaming our event tonight. And one more additional thank you to Aiden Shevlin, our Shakespeare here. Thank you everybody for coming and good night.